as you see, the, one of the most contentious sort of statements I'll make today is that you've probably often heard, and when you watch a lot of the television programs, you know, such as David Attenborough and the Nature programs, Walking with Dinosaurs, the list is endless. Even as, you know, even yesterday when I was watching the news where they've landed that vehicle on the comet that's come back to life, they're talking, you know. Well, then the news reporter says, oh, they're going to now find out, you know, what, how, how, the, how the universe started 15 billion years ago. So it's no surprise that out there amongst the general population um, that a lot of people believe that, you know, the Earth is four and a half billion years old uh, and the universe is 15 billion years old. As creationists, we don't believe that. We believe it's around 6,000 years old. Now, that's quite a staggering difference from, uh, from four and a half billion years. Um, now, in case you're wondering where that figure came from, I didn't dream it up. Um, it came from, obviously, scholars who, if you literally believe that um, you know, God made everything in six literal days, and man was made on the sixth day, and we know, for example, that Adam died when he was 930 years old, and he had, a, he had Seth, and he died at... Um, and then what scholars have done is obviously looked at the genealogies in, the, uh, in, in books like Luke and worked out cross-referencing to external documents of all the dates. Uh, and they've come up with, uh, if, you, if you believe that and you, you go through the genealogies, then you come up with a date of around 6,000 years. You might, you might find the dates, some people talk about six to 10,000 years. It's, cause you, you know, we can't, it's not 100% accurate. We know that there are it, not so much inaccuracies, but there's missing bits of data, so they have to make certain assumptions. Um, but that, that's what we believe, that the Earth is actually 6, 000, around 6,000 years old and not billions of years old. Um, what we always emphasize is that as Christian, as a Christian, I can't prove scientifically that God created the Earth in six days. And we're not trying to do that. What we try to do, though, is to go out and to try to explain to people that actually evolution is just as much a religion as Christianity. Because they can't prove it by either. They can't prove a lot of the facts that they, they're stating either. Um, and that's just a message we want to get across. You know, I don't have a problem with people who want to say, well, you know, we believe in evolution and we believe that the Earth is four and a half billion years old. It doesn't worry me. As long as they understand why they believe in that and that they're actually believing in something that requires as much faith for them to believe in that as it requires faith from us to believe in, that, in our God and our Lord. Um, so that's the main message that we, we try to get across to people. Um, I mentioned that we have an awful lot of, um, we've been to a lot of places, we've had a lot of discussions, um, we put a lot of information on Facebook and we join a lot of forums. Um, and we do expect, uh, we, mean, we do expect hostility from people who aren't Christians, and we do get a lot of hostility from people who aren't Christians. Especially when you talk about the age of Earth being 6,000 years. I mean, you can imagine some of the comments that come back. I, can't, I won't even repeat them, what, what they say. But on our own website, for example, we had one lady who posted a comment to say, well, you can believe what you like, just don't teach it to the kids. You know, that's the, and that was you know, one, of the, uh, one of the remarks and one of the comments that was said that I can tell you about. But after that, a lot of them tend to ridicule us just because we have a different, uh, a different opinion to them. But more alarmingly for us was the fact that uh, a lot of churches um, uh, actually um, have changed, what well, I believe they've changed God's word. They, they look at Genesis, especially the first 11 chapters, um, and in particular the first two or three chapters, and the first, the first chapter where it talks about God made this one the first day and the second day. And they've reinterpreted that, and the only reason they've reinterpreted that is simply because um, people like Darwin, when he came along, um, and they started to talk about, well, these things must have taken millions and millions of years. Well, you've got a shift then all of a sudden, because we, I believe our, our, our forefathers actually believed that everything was, was created in six days. Uh, then all of a sudden society was confronted with, well, actually, the scientists are saying it was millions of years, so how can you actually believe it was all done in six days? Uh, and so to sort of make the Bible fit with what scientists would tell them, they started to, to, to reinterpret God's word. Um, and these are some of the, some of the um, uh, theories, some of the adaptations that they've come up with. You may or may not have heard about them. Uh, the age gap theory, um, a lot of Christians believe that between Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2, there were millions of years, there was a gap and there were millions of years. Uh, and in that gap, that's when Satan rebelled and came down to earth. And he brought death and destruction with him, so that's theory 1. Um, the days, when it talks about... Um, 
evening and morning, uh, day one and day two and day three in Genesis. Uh, some members of my own church believe that they're not 24 hour days, they are actually, they, they are references to periods of time. Uh, and the examples that they give is if you talk about, um, you, you sometimes hear the phrase that in my father's day, um, you know, that refers to a period of time in the past, and, and they sort of say, well, that's what that day is all about. It's not literally a 24 hour day, it's a period of time, and therefore it could be millions of years. Um, another popular theory is God actually used evolution, so, they say, so the scientists say, well, the Bible can't possibly be true. Um, because he, you know, the scientists are saying there was a big bang that had nothing to do with God, and so the, uh, the answer to that is that's because God used the big bang to uh, create everything, and that's how he did it. Um, and the last one, uh, Genesis, the whole uh, first 11 chapters of Genesis, Genesis 1 to 11, uh, is actually poetry. It's not the real story, it's actual poetry. And you know, I, I witnessed this myself, I went to a church where one of the deacons spoke. Um, and that was his line, that it was actually poetry. Um, and he was brave enough to have a question and answer session afterwards, um, and, uh, and of course, you know, what he couldn't explain, for example, was, well, in Abraham, he's mentioned in chapter 11, he's also in chapter 12, so at what point did he actually become real? Um, and of course, another, another issue we had is, well, if you look at the genealogies, um, particularly in Luke, in Luke 3, um, the genealogy goes from Jesus Christ all the way back to Adam. Um, and again, it doesn't make any sense that those genealogies would mix real and fictitious people. It's another bit like me going on Ancestry.com and trying to link myself to Mickey Mouse, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. So they are, they are some of the, uh, some of the, the theories that uh, churches are coming up with. Uh, and again, like I said, I've witnessed the, the, the idea about Genesis being poetry. Uh, I've spoken to someone, uh, an elder in the church, who said they, they're not 24 hour days, and I've spoken to lots of people who said God to be, has used evolution. Um, and because of that, this comment at the bottom is, you know, whilst we expect to come in from a lot of hostility from, from, from non-Christians, and we do come in from a lot of hostility from non-Christians, we, also, we also get a lot of hostility, believe it or not, which is really sad from, from Christians. Because again, I, I, I really don't mind if people want to believe that as Christians, but at least show some brotherly, sisterly love when we, when we talk about this issue. I mean, that's what Jesus told us to do, is to love one another at the end of the day. Um, and um, but unfortunately, we, we, we do tend to get a, a lot of hostility. Okay, so what we actually do, uh, we defend Genesis against all of those uh, claims. So, uh, you know, we, we go around and we, we hold meetings um, explaining that you can actually defend the Bible, you can actually believe in the Bible, where Genesis says everything was created in six little days. It doesn't conflict with uh, evolution. Well, it, it conflicts with the theory of evolution, but it doesn't conflict with science. We've, we've got a website um, at cardiffcreation.org.uk, which is going to be revamped fairly shortly. It's pretty boring at the moment, and the reason it's boring is because I designed it. But I designed it using one of those templates, and I've got no imagination whatsoever. Uh, it's the dullest website you've ever put. We've now got um, we met a Christian in Rabina, uh, Rabina Church, who's, uh, who's a web designer, and he's already revamped it. It looks a lot better, so we're going to launch that fairly shortly. Um, but th the main thrust of what we do is we, we hold meetings. As I say we hold four or five meetings a year, and these are some of the speakers that uh, that we've brought along. Um, so Professor Stuart Burgess, he's a professor of engineering and design at the University of Bristol. We've got uh, Professor Stephen Taylor. We brought. Um, to see the uh, Professor of Electrical Engineering and Electronics at Liverpool University. Um, really funny guy. He's, uh, he's a Scouser, great Scouser accent, and his jokes are brilliant. You know, he's a really entertaining guy, as well as knowing his subject matter in depth. He's a, he's a fantastic guy to listen to. Uh, and then Professor Andy McIntosh, uh, who is a Professor of Thermodynamics, or he was at, at Leeds University, he's now retired. But, uh, he goes all around the world, as does uh, Professor Stuart Curtis. They're in constant demand. They're always, you know, if they're not here, they're in America or Australia or somewhere. And we've had a Dr. Stephen Hayes, who's a specialist in skin cancer. Um, now, all of these guys are obviously a lot cleverer than I am. They're all qualified uh, scientists in their field, um, and they all believe in six day creation. Um, uh, and um, I, I would 
also, you know, what, why we, we tend to bring, why do we bring in um, professors and why do we bring in scientists? It's just because of kudos at the end of the day. I don't actually believe you need to be a scientist to understand a lot of these issues. Um, but, you know, it does bring a certain kudos that these guys who, who are obviously very clever, well educated, believe in six day creation, does, does help the cause in a way. And these are the kind of topics that we've, um, we've been talking about. Um, the flood, why is it normal? Um, again, I've, I, I've um, been to a church meeting where one of my, um, one of my brothers uh, got up and sort of talked about the flood being a local flood. It wasn't a worldwide flood, it was just a local flood. Um, there was, uh, we've had talk about the ark, because again we get lots of questions, well, you know, there's no way the ark could have been big enough. Um, because one of the questions we tend to get asked a lot is, well, what about the dinosaurs? You know, your Tyrannosaurus rexes, your Brontosaurus, they were huge animals. They could never have gone on the ark. And so I quite agree with you. They couldn't have gone on the ark if they were, if we were putting on fully grown ones. But, you know, you don't have to put on fully grown uh, dinosaurs. Um, evolution, fact or fiction, fiction, uh, that was a really good talk. Uh, um, I think that was by Stuart Burgess. Dinosaurs, Dragons of DNA, another talk that was done, and that was delivered by, uh, by Stephen Taylor. Uh, again, looking at, into the history of, of uh, dinosaurs. Um, I mean, one thing I should state, you know, is that obviously I believe that there, there were dinosaurs, you know. I'm not trying to say there weren't any dinosaurs. Um, and, but we believe that they existed when God created dinosaurs. Um, the, uh, and what, what, what uh, Professor Taylor looked at is, you know, the dinosaurs, uh, the, the legend about dragons, um, and uh, we linked that with uh, DNA. And this was DNA that's been found in some um, in some um, in some living cells, not living cells, but in soft tissue uh, on dinosaurs that's been found. So they found some soft tissue and took it off the DNA, um, which again sort of tells, sort of makes you suggest, well, how can there be if this dinosaur is dead and there's still soft tissue, how could it be millions of years old? And, and that's what his talk said as well. Uh, we had a geologist uh, that came to explain to us about the fossil record, because again, uh, one of the arguments of the evolutionists will put up straight away is when you say the Earth is not millions of years old, they'll say yes it is, because look at the fossil record. Um, uh, Stuart Burgess came back and he did uh, The Origin of Man, uh, From God of the Age. He did it from a design perspective, um, so that, that was quite interesting. Um, the human body created not evolved, that was, that was uh, Stuart Burgess again. Genesis in the ancient Chinese, that was an incredible, incredible dis um, um, talk that we had. Um, this, this guy came in who was, who was fluent in, in Chinese, um, he's adopted three Chinese girls. Um, and he, he goes back and forth to China quite a lot. Um, and he was actually showing us how the ancient Chinese language actually correlates an awful lot to Genesis. So to give one example, the, the Chinese, the, the ancient Chinese symbol uh, for boat. The, the ancient Chinese symbol for boat is, is made up of three parts. Uh, and the first part talks about a vessel. The second part, the second and third parts together talk about eight people. So the ancient Chinese symbol talk for boat is eight people in a vessel. The only other reference I know of about eight people being in a vessel is Noah in the Ark. Uh, and he came up with lots and lots of examples um, linking the ancient Chinese language actually to, to, to Genesis. The, the one that I really enjoyed is this one on simple cells and who are you kidding? Um, we we, took, we hear, often hear about um, our bodies made up of trillions of trillions of cells um, and they're often referred to as being simple. We watched um, a video of an, animate, an animated video of what goes on inside a single cell. It is absolutely mind blowing what goes on inside one cell. Absolutely mind blowing. And to think that goes on trillions of times, um, there is nothing simple about a simple cell, believe me. It is, it is incredible. It is incredible. And there is, evolution has got an awful lot of questions to answer to how a simple cell can emerge like that unless there was some designer behind it. And actually the, the, the start of that video was, was presented by a group of six or seven scientists who weren't Christians, um, but who were now thinking that there must be an intelligent designer out there. There has to be an intelligent designer. Um, they won't say there's a God, um, but they, they're saying there must be an intelligent designer because there's no way 
these could have just come together the way they have. Um, it's interesting because they say they won't say it's a god, but other people there, other scientists get really nervous because if you start to admit there's an intelligent designer, it doesn't take an awful lot. To the next step is, well, that must have been a god. Um, but I've been watching actually a lot of programs. My son-in-law-to-be is quite keen on, on aliens. Uh, he watches a lot of these alien programs. And of course, a few of them talk about, well, maybe life came from aliens from other planets. Um, and then the final talk that we were given was, um, can we really rely upon the Bible? Um, which was a sort of created to uh, uh, link to creation in itself. Um, but it was a gentleman called Eddie, Do Eddie Donald who came in um, and he blew us away. He didn't have a PowerPoint presentation, he just had his Bible, he did a presentation. Um, and he was absolutely fantastic. By the time we left, you know, if you had any doubt whether the Bible was reliable or not, there weren't any doubts by the time that we so that's, that's pretty much us, I think. I think that's to be finished. Um, I don't think I've got anything else. That's, so that's what the Cardiff Creation Group is all about and what it stands for. Um, so unless there are any, you've got to guess what my missing, the, the missing word is. Um, no, but unless you've got any questions, I'm happy to try to answer some. Thanks a lot. I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this, but I, again, the reading on that is, um, I, um, you know, through various creation groups such as Answers in Genesis, Creation.com. Um, there's that, you know, a lot of work has gone into looking at the, say, the Hebrew. Um, I think, yeah, it's an arguable point, you know, as far as they're concerned, the word is yom, it means a day. Um, but in the context of the Bible, a lot of scholars have said, yes, it's a day, it can't mean anything else. There are others who are like, you know, it means a period of time. Um, I, I guess it becomes important because then it becomes inconsistent when you're going through the Bible. Uh, when you start interpreting a day to mean a period of time in Genesis, but that same word is used to refer to a day in the New I Testament. Imagine the, the stars are in the sky, or yeah. that, and there's, yeah. there's markers that would measure time then, and, and yeah. perhaps that would come through to, to how we know it to be, but yeah. right to that. But I don't know. But, yeah. It is an interesting point, but, but again, uh, if you take sort of Exodus 20, when it talks about um, you know, the, the, uh, the fourth commandment that God created everything in six days and on the seventh day he rested, um, it, 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 again, it doesn't make any sense um, to us because um, to us it's all fashioned on, on, a, on a week as we know it. Um, otherwise, if uh, on, the sixth, well, on, a, on the seventh day when he rested, then we're commanded to rest. Well, you know, our rest could be millions of years, actually. I know Kevin rests for millions of years. He doesn't do any work. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but it is, yeah, this is me.